and we are ready for Thursday Night Football yeah. Week 11 Super Bowl 51 rematch. The <laughs> red hot New England Patriots take on the Atlanta Falcons. And yes, at some point, we hope the score will be 28 to 3 Atlanta so we can watch another furious comeback. Then, you know, this is a strange juxtaposition. We've got a Patriots team that won 45 to 7 on Sunday. Right. And a Falcons team that was blown out, sir, 43 to 3 by the Cowboys. It doesn't bode well for the Falcons to recover on a short week, and it should be, in theory, easy for the Patriots to keep it rolling a few days late. I would think so. I mean, again, yeah, the Falcons, they're, they're going to be mad. So, of course, you know, prideful, everything. They need to bounce back. I mean, that that's one that's just a nasty taste in your mouth. You know, when you're down, what was it? They were down, what, 36 to – 36 to three at halftime or 30. It was something around that range last week. I mean, the game was clearly over with about four or five minutes left in the second quarter, like over. So, you know, again, I'm expecting a little bit of a, you know, a, a bounce back effort from the Atlanta Falcons. And then the one thing you can count on from the new England Patriots is they don't care. They don't care that they won 45 to seven. That's the beauty up there. You could walk in the building the next day and you'd be like, wait, did we win 45 to seven? Or did we squeak out in a, a game and barely win it and, and, and not play well by the way the coaches act and, and the way the atmosphere is there? So they're not going to be affected by last week. Anything. They're going to continue to push forward because of General Belichick, and he's going to expect nothing about nothing less than we're going to get better today. We're gonna, we still made mistakes in that game, and we're going to fix those problems and everything like that. But the, the Patriots, come on. You know, we've been talking about it. This is it's arguably the hottest team in football. They found their mojo. They did. I don't know if it was the Cowboys game or the Tampa game that gave them the little jolt they needed, but winning five out of the last six, the offense has turned the corner after being, you know, sluggish very much so early in the year. They've become an efficient machine. The offensive line got healthy. They're dominant. Mac Jones continues to make more plays. So there's a lot of positives right now in New England. And yeah, like to your point. I don't think it's gonna. I don't think they're gonna let off the gas or be complacent just because they had a big blowout win against the Browns last week. And there's another reason for them to not be complacent on Thursday night after getting a blowout win on Sunday because last year when they had their Sunday Thursday turnaround, they were in LA. They won 45 oh, nothing, right. not 45 seven over the Chargers, and they got steamrolled by the Rams. Ran all over them. That was the night where we realized, hey, this Cam Akers is pretty good yeah. because he was unstoppable. Right. And it was an embarrassment for the Patriots. So it's even more ammunition for New England to treat everything as business as usual after winning 45-7. And my guess is Bill Belichick in his first meeting with the team after that win over the Browns reminded guys, hey, we had a big Sunday win yeah. last year, right? And four days later, we got our asses kicked. So wake up now. Yeah. It, it's still going to be hard for them to, you know, regard the Falcons like the Rams if a year ago. But it can happen. And in this crazy upside down NFL season, wouldn't it be fitting if the Falcons won after losing by forty to a team that just won by thirty eight? Yeah, that would. That would be on brand for this season. It would be. I know it's hard to get it. And then, of course, Thursday nights, it always seems crazy, too. You don't know what to expect. But I think, like, I would be shocked. I would be shocked. Not to say I would be shocked if Atlanta won some close football game, but I'd be a sh I'd be shocked that uh, – well, I'm, you know what? I'm going to say it right now. Yeah, I'll be shocked if Atlanta won the game, period. I don't, I don't know any other way to say it. I would be absolutely shocked. I mean, again, more shocked than you were last week when the Dolphins beat the Ravens. Um, mm, that's a good one. Mm, no, I, I, I guess I would be more shocked. I would be more shocked. You know, last week I, I, I did think that the Dolphins would hang around. If you remember from our picks podcast, yes, I yes, picked that. Yeah, I yes. thought they would kind of hang around and keep it close just because of the matchup itself. But I, with this New England team, and I think what makes them, you know, different than last year and just different altogether. A lot of new pieces. I think they found the excitement of like, wait, we've we've figured out here how to play the New England way. And we, whoa, this Belichick guy, I mean, it hasn't been easy, but we finally figured out what he wants. And I, I just feel like we're sitting here watching a repeat of history. That's kind of the one thing I've been kind of beating on my podcast a little bit, Mike, is just I, I feel like we're watching the 2001 Patriots all over again. It's, it's the same story. It's like he's built, he's starting to build a dynasty here. 
big physical defense, you know, good corners, secondary, of course, well-coached and creative on that side of the ball. Offensively, you know, can run the ball, control the clock. Got a quarterback that makes a handful of clutch throws every game. They don't make mistakes. And they kind of just play that style of football to where it, it just feels like we got like a young Brady at quarterback and a team that really knows how to play, manage the situations, knows how to play in the red zone, knows how to play on third downs, you know. And, of course, the running game and the, and the jump off they've got off of that the last few weeks, to me, that's really changed the team. The offensive line is special. And Ramondre Stevens, uh, Stevenson – the rookie from, from Oklahoma, to me, has changed their football team. He really has. He's a special runner. You see him here. I mean, he's 240-something pounds. Look how quick his feet are. And he can he can break long runs, too. He's the perfect New England runner to kind of impose the physical will of their football team. And uh, I, I just can't say enough about the Patriots. The Patriots right now, to me, even though it's not a high-flying show, are one of the more fun watchers in football just because – because of the physicality and how they manage the game, and they just do everything to a T, just right all the time. And I think that's what excites me and probably their, their whole fan base right now. But did, did you catch the uncalled taunting after that touchdown? See, I, we're I, looking for it all the I, time. Well, yeah, now. right. Pandora's box is open now, right? Because we just want consistency. Yeah. If you're going to call what they called on Cassius Marsh, then when you get a guy who scores a touchdown and he bangs face masks with an opponent and shouts in his face, I'm just I'm just looking for an understanding of what is and what isn't a foul. Yeah, yeah. And they're I creating these fluctuating standards all over the place. All right, but Stevenson, yeah, he had 100 yards last week and a couple of touchdowns. Damian Harris is cleared to return, and yeah. they've been back to that three-headed monster. Brandon Bolden's gotten more looks this year right. on offense, and I know it drives fantasy owners crazy because there isn't that one guy that you can count yeah, on any given week. Right. But that's the way they do things. Yes. And how about this, Chris? They have outscored their opponents during the four-game winning streak they're currently on by the tune of 150 to 50. That's 37 to 12 on average every week. They have figured it out, and they have just quietly, as we're trying to discern who the great teams are, I feel like as that, that radar scans, where is the great team, where is the great team, for whatever reason, people are overlooking the Patriots. Yeah, they and are. I don't know how many more wins they have to rack up right. before people start saying, maybe it's them, but maybe it is them, and maybe tonight's the night when it's the only game on, and we're going to settle in and watch it, and if they can thump the Falcons, maybe more people will say, if they move to 7-4 and four and get to five straight wins, hey, Patriots are a real threat here. Patriots may win the division from the Bills. There's still two games coming up between the Bills and right. the Patriots, including a Monday right. nighter next month, which is going to be must-see TV. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the Patriots could make a run even at the one seed. If the Titans stumble at all down the stretch, the Patriots could make a run at being the top seed in the AFC. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't disagree. I mean, they're, they're hot. I mean, I, I wouldn't be shocked to see them continue to rip off a bunch of wins here. They match up pretty well with Buffalo. They're going to give Buffalo problems, I think, in some areas. I, I certainly not going to say I'm going to pick them to win the game, but I would think it's going to be very close and come down to the wire. The other thing I'll say off of that, like Mike, and I don't know if you agree with this not or not, but you know, for me, for my money in the AFC, the two teams playing the best football right now are clearly Tennessee and New England. They are the most consistent football teams in that conference. You know, and not a, not like any glaring weakness on either team right now that you look at to go, well, they have this one area. I'm a little not sure about it. You know, these are the two AFC teams that 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 uh, the only two AFC teams that I, I feel like I can say that about. I know some other teams they got some questions, you know, and then maybe they make up for that with whoa, they're really great in that one area too, though. So that makes up for that. But here across the board. You know, what I think with what I love about New England and what Bill Belichick and company have done with the football team is, yeah, they might not have like built a team of superstars and you just go, wow. But I think they've gotten to like what Bill Belichick has always done, you know, why they've been great for 20 years. He has built a team that has versatility in a matchup league to match up with any team. And I think that's the gift of Belichick. So there's never a team or a style of play that comes into town or Thursday night or whatever where they go, oh, man, 
whoa, wait, we don't match up right with them. They can kind of do it all now. He's got the roster in place to really now it comes back to, wait, I got the pieces. Now I can use my brain here and my coaching with my staff. And now we come up with how are we going to use the pieces this week to beat that football team. And to me, that's the gift of the Patriots and why they're a dynasty. You know, in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, we had those great teams, the Niners, the Steelers, right, the, the Cowboys. They could dominate and do that. But in the, the, the era of free agency and salary cap, it's hard to have that team anymore. So he's opted for maybe instead of a roster of 12 A-plus players and a bunch of you know, C minus players behind that, he's gone, you know what? I'm just going to get a bunch of B players, B plus players. And now my coaching will make up for it and I can match up with anybody. And that's where I just see this thing going right now for them. And I think that that excites me a lot. And when my starting running back is injured, I know that my backup is going to be exactly, able to come in and get it exactly. done. And I've got, I've got what Fail I need safe plans always. at the second level, right. a robust middle class right. of backups right. that you can trust when you inevitably have COVID reserve, injured reserve, for any reason whatsoever, a guy can't play. No doubt. The next man up comes in and almost matches completely yeah. what the guy in front of him did. Right. We're getting to the point in the season, too, and it really does jump up on you. I I'm so used to pulling up a team's schedule on their website and, like, this long scroll through 17 games. There aren't many left. No. And speaking of the Titans, the Patriots get yeah. a mini-buy. Right. And they play – the Tennessee Titans at home, yeah. week 12. Boom. I know. Then the next game is at Buffalo, Monday Night Football, week 13. And then a bye week, a very, very late bye for the Patriots. But then they load up the cannon and they finish Colts, Bills, Jaguars, Dolphins. They, oh man, th th this is going to get very interesting down the stretch. They have a chance to take a chunk out of that Titans lead for the one seed. Yeah. And then they get the home and home against the Bills that will most likely decide the AFC East. Yeah, no doubt. And, I mean, of course, you know, yeah, I, we, we saw. I mean, the, the Patriots, the way they're playing, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with with any of these teams, hands down. I mean, Tennessee is – they're a very similar team. I mean, it's, it's really – even the way they're built. Of course, they're GMs from New England. The head coach is a New England guy. So there's a very similar approach there right now. So I don't think we should be shocked that, you know, it is. It's two teams that can kind of match up with anybody – you know, they know how to play on a weekly basis that fits them, you know, against that team. Uh, and and I think that that's what's amazing uh, about the Patriots right now. It really is. And, you know, added to that, you know, you look at their schedule and who they played early in the year. You know, I look at it and just go, yeah, they've won five out of the last six. You know, man, and had a tough loss against the Cowboys, a tough loss against the Bucks. Blew a game in week one in the Miami Dolphins versus the Miami Dolphins. You know, I sit here and I'm one to think like, man, if they played the Cowboys or the Bucks again right now, I'd like to see how that goes down. You know, I do. I just think it's a different team. There's a belief now in New England, I think, with the football team after those huge wins that you talked about. And they're getting that little aura back where it's just like, uh-oh, here comes the evil empire. Dun, 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 dun. And uh, I don't know. I love it. I love the old school approach. I love the fact that how they manage the game so much. And, you know, the one thing I always go back to, Mike, too, is they're such a big team. I mean, when you look at their offensive line and how big they are there, their defensive line, when they're in the 3-4. Last week, I'm watching the Browns. I mean, they got three, three linemen that are all 310-plus. They got, you know, three linebackers that are all 260-plus, 270-ish. Big. They have two linebackers that are bigger than the defense ends for the Cleveland Browns. You know, so there they can go, oh, we got, you know, Derrick Henry or the Titans, you know, and that type of team coming down. I know Derrick Henry's not there, and they want to run the ball and play smash mouth. Well, good luck. They got a bunch of giants in there. Oh, wait, this week we got a team, you know, that passes the ball and wants to throw the ball around the lot like the Buffalo Bills. Well, great. They got corners and safeties growing on trees in New England. So they can really do it all that way, too. And I think that's uh, the, just the magic of Belichick. I also think, Mike, that's the reason why they cut the cord with Brady. Because they didn't want to go all in on just trying to make it all good for Brady. He wanted to build another team here and make one more run at, like, you know, a dynasty. Or maybe get into the Super Bowl a handful of more times. 
And uh, I don't know. I'm sorry to talk so much, but I guess I'm a little excited. No, it's as you good. Can see. It's fascinating. Yeah. And and th this return of the Titans to New England next Sunday is fitting because it was the Titans who popped the balloon on the yeah, Brady right. Belichick Patriots with a playoff win 2019, the interception of Brady, the pick six for his last action as a member of the Patriots in New England, Logan Ryan scoring that touchdown. And that could be a symbolic moment in this rise of the Patriots. And Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.